I think about performance and again, like the DNA of the highest achievers in the world, or we can talk about marketing brand. Both of those are super interesting topics. What do you think is more relevant to what you're working on right now in terms of like messaging and what you want to teach over? Yeah, I look, you know, like, you know I'm a public speaker. Um, I all over the world speaking, and that's really my focus today and really my passion. Uh, so I love talking about the DNA of achievers. What are the traits? And let me tell you, Scott, how I, I that was my first of five books that I've written. I was just on a plane one day. And back then, people don't do it as much now, Scott, but, you know, 15 years ago, t- people in first class, I finally got to move from coach to first class. <laughs> and, you know, you ask somebody, what do you do? Well, people don't even talk to each other now because, because they're either watching a movie or on the, listening to music. But, you know, people will be engaged and excited to tell you what they did. And I started thinking, man, all of these people are always so excited to tell me, but they are seeing basically the same traits. And I thought about myself and and how my small success was, and I said, wow, so it starts with passion. What is that thing that I did? that you've identified, because that's the challenge, Scott. Most people haven't identified their passion, but passion is the fuel that energizes you. It's it's the thing that you go to bed at night thinking about and you wake up in the morning. It's the thing you prepare for because you just love what you're doing. So so I realized that passion is where success all starts from. Without passion, there's no possibility of extreme success because what it coexists with passion like a glove are work ethics and, and those folks that are passionate realize when you live your passion you never work a day in your life and when you see people like venus and kobe bryant god bless his soul and and, and lebron and beyonce these tiger woods these people that are the best in the world at it what people don't see are their work ethics. You know, Kobe Bryant had something called, I love it, it was called 666. And what that stood for is in the off season, he would, for six months on the off season, that's how much time he had, he would go to the gym six days a week, practice six hours a day. Think about this. It is off time. That's what he did. And you look at Stephon Curry. He shoots a thousand three pointers every day of practice. A thousand. And as most people don't understand how passion and work ethics go together. That's why these people are so successful. It's kind of like Malcolm Gladwell in Outliers, and he talk about the ten thousand hours that are required. You see, I'm getting excited now, Scott. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> no, it's good. I lose my shit, man. This is my shit. I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. But when you see that, and then you see those work ethics, and then you understand that these people are risk takers also. They take risks. They they think outside the box. They're not box-in thinkers. And by box-in thinkers, most of us have been conditioned, Scott, that we have to do things a certain way. Since childhood, we were conditioned, like a someone whispering in our ear why we can't do it. Well, you can't do it because you're poor. You can't do it because you're black. You can't do it because you're part of the LGBTQ community. All these reasons why you can't do it. And what we do is we're inside a box hitting walls all day long. We just bounce it against walls because we believe we can't do it. And if we invited someone at our box, they would be just like us, a box in thinker. So the giving analogy, if I'm a hater, then I'm gonna want another hater in my box. <laughs> you know. It busts. And, and so but when you step outside of that box, there's no boundaries at all. So part of success is how we condition ourselves to think and, and not to be boxed in where we think. Like Part of, I think, you know, my maestro says is I never did it the way everybody else did it. You know, when we came into the music industry, they were in the record industry, 
I was in the branding and a, and a branding part of the business. They didn't understand branding and endorsement. And how I'm saying, okay, Destiny's Child marketing budget is a million dollars, but if I got L'Oreal and Samsung song, now their marketing budget is $40 million. And, and so I, I understood that coming from corporate America. You know, there's so many of those 10 traits, you know, it's about building a team. Uh, and, and, and in building a team, you have to have an amazing leader, someone that motivates people, someone that knows how to communicate, someone knows how to listen, that holds people accountable and responsible. Oh,